I got to sit down with the lead developer of the self-proclaimed Hell Let Loose Killer, Resolve. An upcoming realistic World War II simulation of war. A passion project being developed by fans of Hell Let Loose, whom claim they are making the game Hell Let Loose should have been. And allow me to say to those that were doubtful in the comments of the first video, <laughs> I think all of you are going to be not only surprised at how gorgeous Resolve here is, but also how far along in development it actually is. With even potentially a public playtest just a week away. Miley, Resolve's lead developer, was gracious enough to allow me to pick his brain a bit, and I used you guys, the viewers' comments from the last video, to form my little questionnaire. And I think the overwhelming majority of you are going to be super stoked with the dev team's synopsis for this up-and-coming behemoth of a community-driven milsim. Pause the video, strap yourselves in, and hold on to your willy caps, because this one is going to be an all-night slobber knocker. What is up everybody and welcome to the Mill Sim Tax Shooter and Historic Gaming Channel, home of the weekly Steam Key giveaway. Make sure that you're subscribed and you join our little Discord channel link below. There is no better time to be a viewer of the channel as we are giving away a plethora of awesome Steam Keys. Now I want to use every second of this video to show off Resolve. So for those of you interested in the giveaway, just watch any other video after this one. It'll give you directions on exactly how to enter and name like all eight games we have in the goodie bag to give away so a little disclaimer as we jump right into this keep in mind that this was like a discord conference so of course the video quality could be better and my lead's voice might sound like he's on a walkie talkie compared to mine but the meat and potatoes is what we're all here for gentlemen let me say the meat is juicy and the potatoes savory so mr. Miley I want to start by stating something that has stuck with me over the years and that's I remember reading that when they were developing squad and postscriptum whenever they went to add a feature or mechanic into the game they would ask themselves is this gonna add to teamwork is this gonna demand good communication or not and if it was the latter they didn't add it and i feel like that's what made those games so great as the core mechanic and backbone of the game is communication whatever team communicates and works together the best typically wins and i feel like hell at loose started off with that rule in mind and for whatever reason more than likely monetary gain they slowly but surely veered from that rule but saying all that to say as an old man that's played fps since doom and quake counter-strike the most important thing to me in my fps experiences is the feel of the game and that it's not too stiff how does the gunplay feel if it's the kind of game where i turn the corner see an enemy and then find out who can hold the crosshair on the other longest it's probably not my bag baby but i've been spoiled by games like squad where you typically engage at a realistic distance sometimes you even up to like 500 meters and your rounds from your support class LMGs are arcing like softball pitches and a lot of the shooting isn't exactly to kill but to suppress. So I know Resolve is early in development but I was just curious how far along exactly is the ballistic system. We see this beautiful desert map with just a massive valley. Now let's say I'm on one side with my Lee infield just a bolting it as fast as I can letting off shots. Are my bullets actually reaching the other side so currently there's no limit to how far you can shoot in the game uh, and it uses a realistic uh, bullet model currently there's no limit to how far you can shoot the game uses realistic bullet drop and muscle velocity a concern from a longtime viewer of the channel the african map looks very open am i not going to know where i'm getting shot from so this is something that we really thought a lot about when we put the map together because the terrain is so open across all these ridges and the way we go about it is have a lot of different covered venues people can move across and flank around the ridges of the mountain and also when you stand on the edge of a ledge you don't really get full uh, field of view you already or always have a blind spot which opens up for a lot of the tactical gameplay that people will will engage in. And this is all something that we are really keen on tuning to get just perfectly right. Have you all thought at all about combating troll behavior, for instance, spawn camping? So we really don't want the game to have any kind of griefing or exploits and anything that makes the experience really bad in a, in a very artificial way. This is something we'll be constantly keeping an eye on and tuning. 
is the gameplay and or meta of this initial African map mainly going to be based in realistic deep engagements? When we made the map, we knew that this was going to be kind of the flagship map and really wanted to have many different areas. So you go all the way through this big open valley where you have firefights going across it. You have fighting going up the slopes with different ways to maneuver, get vantage points and so on. And then you have this this tight urban environment in the in the ruined village where it almost becomes a completely claustrophobic uh, place where you could be shot from anywhere and you need to constantly be aware. How long has it taken you guys to get the game to the state it's at now? So the game has been in development for about a year with two years planning before that. And the idea right now is to have this as a fully functional uh, prototype vertical slice build of the game um, that we can keep on testing and tuning and then work towards early re uh, early access release uh, with play tests throughout that period uh, to get a much more optimized um, build going at that point. How exactly does the game's dynamic weather system work? So right now we're using a really good uh, plug-in um, to handle the weather and uh, and day night cycle and this is simply because it's 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 the best quality you can get so it utilizes many of the features in Unreal 5 to create really naturalistic looking weather patterns and uh, and atmospheres and this is something that's completely open for us to go in and tune as we see fit but it means that we can very quickly get to a playable build see if these things work, you know, what is fun, and then tune from there. Frickin' cheaters. Has any thought or planning gone into anti-cheat or being able to point these little bastards out and ban them? It's, it's uh, more so about people messing around with their graphics settings uh, on the graphics card. Uh, nothing we have control over, unfortunately, but we'll do everything we can um, to give both uh, server admins the tools to find cheaters uh, easily and also be up to date on uh, on the constantly evolving anti-cheat uh, battle that's going on. Do you plan on having commander call-ins or off-map ordinance similar to squad in postscriptum? Or do you plan on going a more player-controlled style similar to Hell at Loose's Artie? So off-map RT. There will be no off-map RT in the game. We are working with having the squads uh, earn points through completing team objectives and helping the team, doing teamwork, all kinds of things. Uh, and then the squad lead decides if he wants to, to acquire uh, these heavy equipment pieces for the squad. And then the squad deploys it where they, where they see fit and, and use it uh, for that. That is the system we are currently trying out. So, Hell at Loose is a beautiful game. However, one of the most annoying things about Hell at Loose's graphics are the LOD issues. At a distance, certain graphical assets seemingly load in like halfway and tend to look like they're in a Nintendo 64 or PlayStation 1 game. Is this going to be an issue in Resolve? And or how are you using Unreal Engine 5 to combat this problem? So the Nanite is really, really interesting. That's something new with Unreal 5, um, especially 5.1 when it came to, to uh, foliage two-sided uh, geometry as well, uh, which basically means that you don't have all these LOD issues where all of a sudden you move away from a tree and it becomes this huge just cardboard clip box or cardboard cutout um, and someone can hide in it and you cannot see them. And that is something that Unreal 5.1 completely avoids which is extremely exciting and the same goes for buildings at a distance you don't have these LOD transitions uh, and also we can have a very very high poly count on screen uh, without any frame drops so that is an evolving very new technology and will stay on top on uh, on optimizing it as best as possible and also updating the engine to the newest version while we develop 
This is gonna be a game changer, guys. One of the biggest problems in these realistic mill sims is when you're in a realistic deep engagement and you're like hiding behind a bush or tree, but to the enemy, they don't even see the bush or tree. They just see you glaring there, looking like an idiot, just ready to take some lead to the face. That or the opposite problem, often seen in Hell at Loose, where a simple raggedy weed loads in at a distance, like a big cardboard pop-up you can't see behind. This is really gonna make those real realistic hill-to-hill -hill firefights just that much more real. Now lastly, a great question from a viewer. Can you elaborate on the operations seen in the first video where it was mentioned each squad leader would be able to earn abilities, equipments, perks, etc.? And will there be parachuting? So one of the things the squad lead can do, so he can deploy um, he can deploy equipment for each squad, he can buy additional firepower for the squad for these points that he save up during team teamwork. Um, and then he can also place a temporary spawn on the map for his squad that uh, is a parachute spawn, so the squad comes in in a parachute. Right now they just drop to the ground from no plane comes over anything, but that's something that we, we want to get a full animation sequence um, and are just testing it out to see if there are any issues uh, with this kind of system before we put a lot of effort into the visuals. Can you tell us anything about what the commander gameplay will be like? So basically as commander you have, you know, abilities like this, right? That you buy into. And then you have currently a view like this where you can check out everything on the map and you can put these uh, objectives for people. Ah, I see. So I take it that's how squads will earn their points. Basically, the squads that follow the commander's orders the best will wind up with the most squad points that they can then spend. Uh, but we would like to make it, you know, so a attack is, is, you know, an actual arrow saying attack in this direction. If you are uh, anywhere on that arrow or near to that arrow, then you will get points while doing it, right? And a defense is more like a... a Cervical or something like that. Personally, being a huge fan of RTS games like Age of Empires, fans of that genre like myself are going to have a blast playing Commander. This is really unique and awesome. This is uh, one of the so-called unique selling points that uh, we want to reveal with the Kickstarter, but you got a sneak peek now. Oh, should I edit this out of the video? I don't want to break NDA or anything. <laughs> There's no NDA. You are free to share anything. NDAs are for wankers. <laughs> Let's go. Oh man, this is really exciting stuff. And I know I speak not only for myself, but for my viewers when I say thank you for taking the time out of your day to answer these questions. God bless you, sir. God bless Resolve. And I will very much be looking forward to the more extensive Q&A coming in the next week or so. Again, Miley, it was a pleasure having you. Thank you, sir. All right. Take care. All right, guys, don't forget there is a public playtest coming possibly as soon as a week from now. I'm going to have links down in a pinned comment to not only the Discord, but the Steam page also. I'm sure they will announce in the Discord when they plan on doing the playtest. Of course, Steam will have to approve the build. And then, of course, downloading the alpha build will happen on the Steam page. If you want to make it easy on yourself, just stay tuned. You can bet I will keep you boys up to date. If you missed the first video, definitely check it out. There's a lot of stuff we went over there that we didn't touch on here. And we're going to go ahead and wrap things up. Like I said, for details on the giveaway, check out any other video. Apparently, the average YouTube viewer has the attention span of a goldfish. And every minute I go over 10 minutes, we lose about 1,000 viewers or so. <laughs> I hope you boys are as excited for Resolve as I am. For any of you guys that have been following the channel long enough, I hate to be the I told you so type. But how many times have I said modders and small indie studios are literally responsible for almost all of the innovation in gaming that actually matters. Please pound that subscribe button. We are barreling towards 5,000 subscribers. It's been four long years. Special shout out to all you boys who have been riding with me since day one. An even more special shout out to my channel members, the Millsimp Minions. Holy smokes. We got the band back together the other night and had some hell of a games of Postscriptum. Needless to say, it was an all night slobber knocker. Those gameplay videos will be coming very 
very soon. I was thinking about doing a less edited version of one of the games just for the minions. Consider supporting the channel. Get exclusive videos and exclusive Discord. Come steamroll the enemy team all the way back to its spawn with us. Keep in mind, all three tiers get double the entry in every week's Steam Key giveaway. 99 cents a month or even 25 cents a week could be the thing to help you win a $40 copy of Beyond the Wire. And yeah, sure, it's a dead game, but it's freaking amazing. They finally got bots. I want to make a quick correction on my last video. Apparently, the planned postscriptum free weekend didn't happen. Sure, some altercation with Steam, but hey, we don't have a dev team to figure it out or let us know what's going on. However, the game is still only 10 bucks until the 12th. Unfortunately, it has a very high learning curve, and typically your first two hours of gameplay are just trying to figure out where the hell you're getting shot from. <laughs> that was my first two hours of squad for sure. But I promise you, if you stick with it, you will have experiences like you've never had in gaming. I never thought 38 years of life and 38 years of gaming, the most recent playing squad and postscriptum, would be the most amazing experiences I've had. It's now Saturday and we need to give away a Steam key. Congratulations to our newest Millsip minion, Bacchus. You're this week's winner. DM me on Discord and make your selection. Alright, cheers to all the boys working on Resolve, the future of military simulation. You guys already know you can count on me as far as covering everything Resolve. I will see you boys in the next one. Y'all be good to each other.